Hi there everyone, my name's Dave West, I hope we're all doing well. So welcome back to the ultimate video test and today I'm checking out the Oppo Find X5 Pro in low light conditions. Now as with all ultimate video tests I'll leave one of the main camera specifications down in the description and I'll just run through some of the high level features throughout the video to help save you some time. Now as far as video is concerned, nothing which has drastically changed from the Oppo Find X5 x3 pro and you can notice that much as much with the front facing camera so this is a 32 megapixel fixed focus camera and this can only record video up to 1080p at 30 frames per second i can only guess that oppo's user base don't really care about 4k video on the selfie camera so this is literally all we've got there's no 60 frames per second option it is literally all you get now strangely you don't get electronic image stabilization either so it's a bit of a bizarre emission for such a powerful handset the snapdragon 8 gen 1 which powers the oppo find x5 pro is easily capable of much better video than what you're seeing here but for the purposes of science and curiosity for those looking to find out what the video is like this is how it looks on the Oppo Find X5 Pro. So you can see it's very grainy and it's not really coping that well in this low light situation. Now you do get slightly different viewpoints. So that's the slightly wider and that's the slightly closer. So it's not really that much use, as far as much use as a second arse on your elbow. But there we go, that is the video you get from the front facing camera at 1080p at 30 frames per second. And spoiler alert, things do get a lot better once you switch around to the rear cameras. Now, if you really do need to stabilize the video, no need for a gimbal. You can use the ultra steady mode on the front facing camera. And this is applying some clever software tricks to give you this really nice smooth video. But the problem is because of the resolution and the, the limited scope of this selfie camera, it is quite small at the end of the day, so it doesn't let in a lot of light. But at the very least, you can get some smooth stabilization from your selfie footage if you wish. So if I just turn back towards the street light, and you can just see everything is that much smoother behind me. And the good thing is you've got this little spirit level in the middle of the screen, and you can feel the haptics clicking away just to let you know that you are on level ground with the image. So another mode from the selfie camera and this is portrait video mode so this is pretty nifty we get a nice blurred background around the subject even at night uh, whilst the video image quality is not ideal and imagine in the daytime this will look pretty spiffy so i will do a separate test for the find x5 pro in daylight but this is just to show you how it works at night and you can talk you can toggle the bokeh level so you can have it like super aggressive or slightly shallower so you can see a little bit more of the background behind you okay so round to the rear cameras then on the oppo find x5 pro and thankfully things drastically improve when using the rear cameras now both of the rear cameras i should say both of there's three but the main camera so that's the ultra wide and the main lens are both 50 megapixel cameras both exactly the same lens so these are sony imx 766 lenses so these have been carried over from the oppo find x3 pro and you can see even using the ultra wide camera you get a really decent image even in darker situations such as this so Looking over to the left hand side, you can see a cheeky star and you can even see shadow detail. Not ideal, but it is there. You can see just how much light this ultra wide lens drags in. Uh, this is commonly regarded as one of the best ultra wide cameras you can get on a smartphone. And I would probably agree. It's really, really good. And the image stabilization also does a really good job in low light as well. It was not perfect. You will see some jitters, especially up ahead with slightly more detailed scenery so there's lots of things packed together you might see some jitters in the video but let's, for, let's not forget this is a smartphone it's not meant to be perfect so if you do want to take out your phone take your phone out in the dark then this is how it's going to look with the oppo find x5 pro 
Okay, so main lens now then. Now both of these lenses can record video up to 4K at 60 frames per second. So there's no 8K like you can get on the Find X5 Pro sister handset, the OnePlus 9, OnePlus 9 Pro, etc. But I can count the amount of people I know with an 8K TV on half a finger. So there goes that. It's nice to have the option and the phone is capable if you use something like Gcam. But for now we just get 4K at up to 30, it's up to 60 frames per second. But you can see, even looking out into the distance there. A little bit of focus hunting just so it decides what it wants to do. But if you look, you can see the stars twinkling up ahead and it's dragging in loads of light. So you can even see the house up on the, up on the common there. Very, very impressive. The white balance is a little bit strange. So everything's got this kind of orange tint to it. No thanks to some of the street lighting, but nothing you can't fix with a little bit of editing later. You can see there's a lot of focus pump in there. Um, that's just because I think the phone is just trying its real best to try and get the most out of the scene in the distance there. And if you just tap on, you can lock the focus on the distance. So not ideal. I think that is more a sort of software problem rather than the lens itself. Just give an idea. I've had the phone for a week and a half and I've had three software updates so far. So I'm sure Oppo can fix that in a later update. Okay, so there is an additional camera on the Find X5 Pro and that is the 13 megapixel telephoto camera. Now this has a maximum of two times opti optical zoom and then goes on to a further 20 times zoom. So this is hybrid zoom and it looks really awful in night conditions. So you're effectively getting two times optical and 18 times digital zoom on top. And I can just pull back and you can see the varying levels of zoom before it snaps back to the optical range of the lens. But even with a zoom camera, you get a pretty decent amount of light into the camera. I think this is being helped out by the main camera a little bit, so it may well just be cropping in. But it's just to give you an idea of how the zoom lens works. So there's the ultra wide. Zoom in one times and there's two times. So that is just to give you an indication of how the two times telephoto camera looks at 4K at 30 frames per second. Okay, so 4K at 60 frames per second now. Now you can see there's a noticeable dip in the image quality at 4K 60, although not quite as bad as I was expecting. It's still getting a decent amount of light into the lens, but you can see these shadows over on the left hand side here are much more pronounced than when you're recording at 4K at 30 frames per second. That records at full time 4K 60, so there's no auto frame rate going on here. It just records at 60 FPS and this is what you get. So good thing these moving cars coming past give a good indication of the smoothness of the video. And on both front and rear cameras, you get stereo sound recording. And again, same place, just pan around. So you can see there, it's doing a pretty decent job, but again, there's some focus pumping going on now and again, which again, I just think is software related. Didn't do this on the Find X3 Pro. So I just think there's a few little kinks for Oppo to iron out on the Find X5 Pro. Uh, looking out into the distance now well, that's all i can actually see so as far as realism goes that is what i can see you can even see some stars there up in the sky and the silhouettes of the trees but that is how it looks at 4k 60 from the ultra wide camera all right so here's 4k 60 from the main camera and again getting a really decent amount of light into the lens although not quite as good as 4k 30 frames per second just look over to the sky and you can see the stars up ahead there in the distance you can even make out some of the formations you can see there 
which is pretty nifty. And you still get the really decent electronic image stabilization as well. Now with 4K60, you can use the zoom camera, which is using the slider on the screen. That is two times optical zoom at 4K60. Which looks pretty decent in my opinion. And then if I go back to the main camera, that is how things look using the main lens. Now, in addition to the main camera mode, you also get Ultra Steady Pro. Now, this uses the ultra wide angle camera and also the main camera, and it's video at 1080p at 60 frames per second. The frame rate is actually locked with Ultra Steady Pro, so you only get 60 frames per second at the moment. I think maybe Oppo may add 30 frames per second later on. But this is just to give you an idea of the ultra steady mode. And if I walk, you can see the stabilization is really solid. Again, it's one of those modes which doesn't really have much sort of shelf life in my opinion because the electronic stabilization in the main camera mode is so good that it kind of renders this a little bit useless. But the option is there if you do want to use it. Now, I'll just cross over the road here and just go down this main street. Now, now and again you can see a bit of focus hunting and it seems to be a bit of a theme with the software on the Find X5 Pro at the moment but when it does get it right it looks pretty good and here's the main lens using the ultra steady mode at 1080p 60 and you get a little bit more light from the main lens and colour is pretty accurate as well the colour of these cars as I walk past them is reasonably accurate to what the human eye can see and the ultra steady mode I've noticed is just doing a good job of just smoothing out footsteps so you'll get as much bounce as I walk along and record this video so there's the ultra steady mode at 1080p 60 from both the ultra wide and the main camera all right so that's the end then of the Oppo Find X5 Pro ultimate video test hope you enjoyed this quick look at how this phone performs at night with video some little improvements to be made, but I think that can be remedied with some software updates later on down the line. But as far as the ultra wide camera and the main camera goes in low light situations, they're really good. Just shows you how far we've come with mobile photography and videography over the last few years. But if you've got any comments or questions about anything you've seen in the video, then please do let me know down in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And don't forget, if you're new around here, then please consider subscribing so you don't miss more videos coming on the channel very, very soon. But for now, this has been my look at the Oppo Find X5 Pro in low light conditions. My name is Dave West, and I'll catch you guys later.